You know how versions work. Like uh, normally you introduce some part, more like an antigen, you introduce some part of the disease into you. Yeah, yeah. So that when it comes, it's fine. Your body sees that, oh, I know this, then yeah. you're able to do it. The same way this also does the game. Okay. So we introduce you to the tricks so that when you come across it, you'll say, ah, this is the, I've seen this before. Okay. Hi, good day and welcome to another edition of The Lowdown here on Ghana Web TV. My name is Daniel Odro and as usual, I will bring you an educative and insightful conversation. Today, we would focus on health a bit more. We uh, would have a rep from the Ghana Health Service to educate us about vaccination and everything you need to know. As you may be aware, the Ghana Health Service has reported that there is another surge in the COVID-19 uh, viruses or the cases as as we speak there are about 31 cases recorded in ghana one of the many interventions the ghana health service has introduced is vaccination which has proven to be very reliable in the height of the covid pandemic you remember uh, there was a lot of talk about keeping your distance washing your hands etc etc but vaccination has proven to be the long-term solution how safe is it to vaccinate there are a few people who are still doubting thomas's when it comes to vaccination but we'll hear from the experts those who know and have worked with vaccination or vaccines for some time my guest today is mr joel uh joel you have to mention your surname I, I, your surname is a mouthful for me right. i don't want to get it wrong so what's your what's your full name sir okay so uh, my name is joel abe kulia Abeikuya. Yeah, Abeikuya. Okay, yes. and you work with the Ghana Health Service. And I work as with what? So, so I'm actually with the Health Promotion Division. Health Promotion Division. That's right. So I coordinate the risk communications there. Okay. And then I'm also acting as uh, the head for health education. Okay. Yeah. So typically, what's 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 your day like? With i.e. the the portfolio you hold no, no. as a health risk uh, analyst and all of that. What is your typical day like? All right. So my typical day is um, it's all about uh, looking out for misinformation. Okay. And then uh, addressing them. So we actually have a team that um, has been on the ground monitoring uh, the media portals that we have. So uh, from radio, TV, and also the print. And all that we are looking out for is. Uh, uh, potential misinformation and disinformation. Okay. And the idea is that uh, now we want to be proactive, and that is why that portfolio uh, is so kind of uh, dominant okay. in terms of uh, uh, health now. Yeah. Uh, so all that we're trying to do is to ensure that uh, misinformation and disinformation uh, has been arrested and then nipped to the bat before sometimes the uh, uh, they cause some of the challenges that we have had as far as COVID is concerned, like you yeah. mentioned. Yeah. So. Yeah. That is what I'm at for. And also, so what are you capacity. targeting usually? Social media, traditional media? What, what are you targeting? So all of them. So, social, traditional. Okay. Yes. So, so that's why I mentioned the print media and then television. And then also, we also have the social media. Okay. So, for the social media, we do have some dashboards that we use that, uh, that monitors and then generates the reports for us. Okay. And then all that we do as a team is to ensure that at least we're able to kind of uh, filter the mm -hmm. information that we we'll get. Uh, the idea is that we're just looking for the ones that have the potential of actually um, impeding the interventions that we have. And you just mentioned like the vaccinations. Yeah. So, so that is our day-to-day. -day, day -to -day. So for example, if you saw someone post on Twitter or Facebook or any of the social media handles, yeah. how do you go, up, how do you correct that misinformation? That misinformation, right. So normally what we do is that um, when we see somebody who posts something, Mm -hmm. on uh, the social media handles that you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, first of all, what we're trying to look at, how many followers has a person got? Okay. And then maybe how widespread has um, what they call that information gone? Uh, because those are some of the things that we look at. For instance, if you, uh, you saw a post with one person and then maybe you check the person's profile and mm -hmm. then you know, maybe it might just end there. But we're always interested in the, the numbers. So what we do is that um, we pick that information and then uh, because of the fact that uh, maybe if that person has got wide reach and then has a lot of followers, that means that the potential that can cause havoc in the event that that information goes as high. Okay. So we try to ensure that we are, uh, the information first of all, we have to fact check it to see 
uh, with uh, some of the protocols that we have. For okay. instance, what you're saying, is it right or maybe it was meant to mislead people? Mm -hmm. and, yeah. now, there are some uh, more times when they are sharing, the intention is not to mislead. Maybe the person is just being naive or maybe wants to help. Uh, so in that case, that is where normal would say the person is misinforming the public. But there are others who intentionally to do want to kind of uh, misinform the public. And that one, that is the disinformation that we are talking about. So those pieces of information, we get them and then ensure that um, the right thing is being given out. So normally we use the same uh, portal that the person uses and then like to also share the accurate information out. Okay. So do you go under the person's post to correct it or you, you just use your page to correct that misinformation or do you reach out to the person and say this is not accurate, delete it or amend it or how do you do it? All right. So you know how sometimes it's very difficult to sometimes get a source of some of those information. Okay. Uh -huh. So what we are, once it's a conversation, we also provide a conversation there. Okay. And there are times that like uh, they do um, also come out to rebut what you then then the conversation can happen then, <laughs> okay. you see. Uh, but uh, there are others too, like we also have our own portals. So we also share on our portals because the thing is that once that information has come out, we can always tell that it's something that is circulated. Especially if maybe we heard it uh, today and then today we hear it in another uh, social media platform. That means it's, it's something that is circulated. So we also shared on the same, our social media platforms, and then including other um, uh, portals that we have available, just to ensure that at least uh, whatever that is going on, uh, there's something that is also countering it. Uh, so that is uh, how we do uh, deal, uh, deal with it. So either we are part of the conversation, so that at least we can be able to provide that is, And most of the time, because uh, they know that this is coming from uh, the Ghana Health Service, we don't know yeah, is well. a credible this yeah. thing. Yeah. Even though sometimes there can be some uh, controversies that may come. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, as for the mistrust, sometimes on the part of uh, uh, government authorities, yeah. uh, you cannot deal with that. They are, they are there. Yeah. But all that we have to do is that we have to be resilient and then ensure that our background is always clean so that whatever information that we put our purpose will have trust in us, you know, mm -hmm. as the ones who are holding yeah. the credible information. But is it the same procedure for traditional media? So if somebody printed it, it would have gone to press, the newspaper would have gone out already. So if there's a mistake, how do you deal with this? A radio station or a TV station did the same. You have sometimes herbalists, spiritualists on TV, mm -hmm. misinforming, disinforming. How do you address that as well? Right. So for as for the traditional media, um, I might say that sometimes uh, it's easier dealing with them than when it's on the social, social media. media. Okay. Yeah. Because for the traditional media, um, the reason why sometimes those things go out is that over the times, uh, normally we leave that information void, a gap. Because media will always want to verify the information before they send it out. Okay. And uh, I must say sometimes uh, we are not quick to respond to this because of uh, sometimes bureaucratic mm -hmm. kind of this. And then the person wants to write, it's news. Yeah. Uh, so, and also in a hurry. So most of the time what they do is that uh, they'll actually put it out there. And then once they put it out there, we know that it's not. We, have, we are forced to come out and deal with it. Okay. And sometimes, like I mentioned, it's easier because they'll give you the platform to actually come and then uh, provide the accurate information. And most of the times, so those who have gone ahead to, um, mm -hmm. to print, and it's gone, they kind of issue rejoinders yeah, yeah, to balance, yeah. yes. So okay. it's easier and then the, the processes are quite uh, okay. uh, different, but just that it's easier on the part of the other one. Okay. Yeah. This is still the lowdown on Ghana Web TV. My name is Daniel Ojo. We're having a conversation about vaccines and the, all the myths around vaccinations in Ghana. I remember the height of the COVID vaccine, there were a lot of theories, especially about men and the fact that taking the vaccine could make, him, uh, could make you impotent and, and all of that. So those are all myths and, uh, if you like, misconceptions about vaccination. Um, but for children, we know that they, they, they take vaccination when they are born to ensure that they do not contract the likes of um, tetanus, measles, and all of that. So the acceptance rate among children quite high. But for adults, they still have some stereotypes and some... Um, if you like their own ideas, maybe because they've read something somewhere or they've heard something somewhere. But today we're trying to, um, if you like, uh, dis distill and try to get an expert opinion on the essence of vaccination, whether or not it's a good thing for us to do. Today my guest is Joel.
the COVID cases are going up, yeah. 31 cases as we speak today. Is it a source of concern and bother to the Ghana Health Service? It is. It is. It is. And uh, we have always, I mean, uh, it is. Because if you look at what COVID actually did to us, then it is uh, it's something that we should all be worried uh, mm -hmm. in terms of how the cases are going high. And, uh, and I think that COVID, you know, never went. Never went? No. But we, 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 we got used to it exactly. and got back to our normal lives. Great. So because we knew that, like, uh, definitely we are used to it, so we have also made it now part of, um, uh, what do you call it, the routine services that is in terms of how you manage COVID. And so it's now also part of the routine services that we do provide. So... Uh, we have even, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, equipped some um, hospitals in terms of how they can be able to treat mild and then to moderate COVID. Okay. Uh, so that um, once you know the signs and symptoms, you present yourself to the, the hospital for them to confirm whether it's actually COVID first and then whether you have the mild or the moderate one. And then the one they can, uh, there are some medications that are available that they can give you then you can manage yourself in the house then, okay. yeah, just to ensure that you do not go into the, the severe cases that we do have. Then. So that is what one of the things that are the interventions that we have added to um, the interventions that we have in terms of uh, dealing with the COVID-19. But it's just that, like I always mentioned, behavior change sometimes is, uh, is something that is so difficult, mm -hmm. especially if uh, people have been uh, fatigued for a very long time with an overload of information on one particular issue. Yeah. Yes, because uh, COVID came, it affected every sphere of our life, yeah. apart from the health, economic-wise, and so yeah. So it's something that, um, in fact, you will expect from anybody that maybe I don't even want to hear about this COVID again. Yeah. And uh, I would say that that is one of the consequences that we are seeing today, because um, it, it never went. And uh, some of the protective measures that yeah. we were having, you could see Veronica Bacchus almost everywhere. Yeah, you know, now and you can't uh, find it. now you can't even find. It. There are some you still see the volcano uh, backers, but, then but then there's it. no water even inside, you know. So some of all those things that we're doing that was protecting us from uh, diseases, uh, you know, by default, cholera and all those things too were also reduced because we're washing our oh, hands. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so because we kind of uh, downplayed ourselves, and, and, and I must also say even uh, the health workers too, so because the protocols are there that uh, those days that were at the peak of COVID, when you enter a health facility, how you treat or how you handle a patient to, like how you have to protect, you wear your protective, uh, this, the PPEs and stuff. Yes. Yeah. I must say even at the health exactly. side, they also yes. kind of downplayed. Yes. You know, so they also got in, uh, into contact. So the numbers that you are talking about, is not only among the general public, but even health workers are among two. Okay. Yeah, so... Uh, it's something that is worrisome because we don't actually want the, it's an infectious disease yeah. and once we are beginning to have it and also because of how now we've taken it like it's normal you can imagine somebody has it and then doesn't know and then he goes home maybe the fear factor is gone um, ar around it you know when it came it was scared we were, a lot of people were scared in, in, right. in europe people were dying from covid but it's like it's become one of the regular malaria like you know diseases that we we take for granted I agree. And the, 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 the risk perception concerning it, I mean, uh, now has also gone down. It's because now we have experienced it before. Mm -hmm. And then uh, people had it and were not showing signs and symptoms. Mm -hmm. So for some people, it's like the theories that they had concerning the disease itself, they have been uh, vindicated. Mm -hmm. uh, so in terms of the, the risk perception that they had, they take it because they know that oh, when I get it, it's like a common cold and stuff. Yeah. Maybe after some time, I'll be okay. So, of course, they are very comfortable with that. Yeah. Yeah. And then that is all. But let's also not forget that there are others too, like um, we started mentioning, uh, in terms of how it will affect you when you get infected. Yeah. It will be different from how. Because yeah. we are if you different. have underlying health conditions, exactly. it could aggravate that, it. Exactly. You know? Okay. And apart from that, too, uh, we are different human beings. Like how you will react to it will be different from another person. So. Right. So even if there are others, you know, those times they used to say it was for the elderly people with underlying conditions. Mm -hmm. Then when they did the statistics in terms of uh, the age groups, you found that those who were supposed to be stronger are also going down with the disease. Yeah. Uh, so 
the dynamics are different and, and that is what we say in the like it's something that is uh, we need to take very seriously okay uh, because you don't know how the effect might be on another yeah and for that matter we all need to ensure that at least the protective measures that we are supposed to have okay i mean we still continue to adhere to them still. okay yeah. we'll go for our first break when we return we'll still uh, discuss um especially the myth about vac vaccines and then we'll zoom into also an app called Cranky Uncle App, Vaccine App, and how it works and what it's supposed to do to help you, especially with the surge in COVID-19 cases. That app doesn't only deal with COVID vaccines, it also deals with a lot of other vaccines and would, would, would demonstrate to you how it works. My conversation is with Joe Abekulea, who is with the Ghana Health Service, is here to educate us about a lot of things regarding health. We'll go for a first break when we return, we'll continue with our conversation, stay with us. Heart, be mindful of your health. Edia products, not your makeup. I welcome you to Sigma Health and Beauty. You can call us the beauty embassy. Who pursue beauty are more revealed with quality makeup products? There is only one place. The Sigma Health and Beauty 2022 Ghana Makeup Awards. Beauty Retail Business of the Year. Of course, we are the defending champions. <laughs> World class makeup brands and quiet on. You name it. Maybelline, Dark and Lovely. House of Tara. Any, many more. Your professionalism in the beauty industry is unmatchable. About what for? Brahmin showed the proper way of applying our products. Sigma Health and Beauty, Yewa Accra, Makwala, Georgina Stores, and Rollins Park, Gate 4. Friday in 0248-138-596 and 0201-408-186 or visit our online shop at www.beautyavenuegh.com. Sigma, your beauty, our joy. Welcome back from the break. This is still the lowdown on Ghana Web TV. My name is Daniel Odro, and as always, we bring you very educative uh, stuff on the lowdown. Today, we are focusing on health, especially vaccine. We are having a conversation with the unofficial of the Ghana Health Service, uh, Mr. Joel Abekulea. He's with the Comms Department. He specializes in trying to, um, if you like, deal with disinformation and misinformation as far as health is concerned. We've been talking about what this typical day is like, uh, we're talking about some of the cases of uh, misinformation around vaccines and what he does on social media and traditional media. Uh, so Joel, there's a surge in COVID vaccine. Do you suggest that with this surge, those who have not vaccinated should vaccinate, those who have not taken a booster should go and take a booster and should we go back to nose mask veronica buckets using to wash our hands should we go back to those basics right so thank you very much so uh yes uh, we have to we have to yes uh, not even for the sake of COVID, because if you take the issues that you just mentioned veronica buckets and hand washing is one of the number one things if you have to prevent diseases you have to do that that's right and then number two I already mentioned that in terms of uh, usage of the nose mask, the nose mask, it has an added advantage. You know, uh, dust and things are everywhere. So when you use it, apart from the yeah, COVID, sure. it also helps you to prevent some other uh, what you call diseases that might come your way and stuff. Okay. And vaccination, of course, number one, because um, you need to ensure that at least uh, you're vaccinated, so that um, any time that maybe any disease is coming, I mean, it can be able to fight. Yeah. and that is in the get to the worst stage that it needs to be. So those who have not vaccinated needs to get vaccinated. And then if you have also gotten vaccinated and it's been a while, at least, I mean, you can go for a booster too. But the, the announcement as to where to even go for the vaccinations and the boosters are not as, as heavy as it exactly. used to be at the height of the COVID. So yes. people need information. Would you accept that that's a deficiency that must be rectified? I agree. Okay. I strongly agree to that. And, yeah. and it's something that uh, we are uh, trying to, not trying, we are working at it to ensure that uh, and then it's good for the feedback you have given. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll just uh, try to ensure that within 
uh, today and then tomorrow, mm -hmm. the places that uh, people need to know mm -hmm. to get yeah. vaccinated with them. I think uh, you rightly mentioned that those things we used to even do like by regional base, yeah. like in Greater Accra, the places where you can go and then get mm -hmm. vaccinated. And then if it's that, maybe you also need to stay at home so that the vaccinators will come to your home mm -hmm. to or ensure that that information is being given to the general public so that we are all... Uh, but uh, I think uh, the whole crust of the matter is that sometimes you even bring the vaccine, the vaccine into the house and the people are saying that I will not take. Yeah. Yes, and then that is where, That's where we, we right. come in to see how we can be able to deal with it. Because we realize that over the years, we have always been having one jacket in terms of um, uh, one message. The person is good, go for it. But the person has a problem. Maybe the person is afraid that when I take it, like some of the myths, maybe yeah. you get some erectile dysfunction or you know, Ghana, you yeah, mm -hmm. have value children. <laughs> so if you tell me that as a young man, I've not given birth yet or maybe I've not reached my replacement level. Yeah. And then you tell me that, uh, or oh, I hear that when you take it, this is what will happen to you, and then maybe you, are, you come to my home. Definitely, I will not give you access to that. Yeah. And those are the issues that we are trying to see how we come able to address. So we are always on the ground trying to hear what are the reasons why people, people are not. Exactly. Then we can be able to find uh, what they call it, an amicable solution to see how we can get them that problem solved yeah. so that they can also take the vaccine. Do you have any research that suggests that? Um, for a country that says majority is, um, majority of the, the populace or the citizens are uneducated mm. or don't have that level of education, yeah. like, is, are these perceptions, misconceptions more among those who are, say, having gone to school to the highest level or you have people who are very educated and still hold on to these misconceptions? Do you have any research to that effect? All right, so um, we have some research, but not uh, the sample size, not too much. Okay. And then also even uh, anecdotal, actually, um, the idea was not research-based, but because we have always been listening, yeah. then, uh, we do uh, what we call quality data that we realize. But it's always varied. Okay. Uh, it's always varied. So, for instance, you see more of the educated people, especially when it comes to the safety of the person. Okay. talking more about it and that is one of the things that is keeping them away okay one is that because um uh, you know vaccines take a very long time to be produced you need to test it and test it yeah. amongst different breeds yeah. of uh, yeah. people and things so that like uh, in terms of the adverse effects mm -hmm. you are able to actually determine that you cannot certify that this is ready yeah but because this was more like an emergency and uh, they also forget it affected every country. So a lot of resources was actually put into it. Yeah. And then that was how we were able to kind of uh, get this vaccine within a short yeah. period of time. Yeah. And uh, let me also mention that, um, you know, we keep on getting new information about the vaccine. Uh, so those who are well educated, definitely they, they read and then they have this information. Mm -hmm. And because of previous information, I mean like uh, previous information about vaccinations, they are thoughts about the safety is different. Okay. And those are some of the things that uh, will normally among that group will kind of, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, inhibit them, inhibit them from taking the vaccine. But when you go to like those also less educated, that issue is not actually their problem. Uh, now their problem is about the uh, cultural, you know, and then uh, the issues that has to do with, uh, uh, what, in fact, some even think that it's not there. <laughs> yeah. Because of where they are, they haven't actually seen somebody go down with COVID. Yeah. You know, so that is the divide. Okay. Uh -huh. So for there, and then they are also worried about issues of uh, fertility, fertility and yeah. all those stuff. That, yeah. that is the divide in terms of like those who are. But you can't blame them. Even even the former American president, Donald Trump, w was spreading a lot of this information about the vaccine and all of that at the height of it. That's right. Where people had to go to the dark to be taken detergents and, and all of that. That's right. So that is one of the tricks that we do have on cranking ankle. Okay. Yes. You know, is if you listen to the logic, it makes logic, but you see that it's, it's a fallacy. So for instance, if you say gems, alcohol kills gems, isn't it? So you, you drink so, it. So, so, <laughs> so, so, so I use my hand and uh -huh. I kill the ones that are in my hand, isn't it? And then so the one that is covered, you said that it was like they are in my throat. Truth, yeah. Will I be right? Maybe if I gulp it to kind of. Mm -hmm. You see, it like. Yeah, but for somebody who's who not. Exactly. 
and, and, and actually about uh, 700 people in the U.S., I think U.S. and uh, U.K. combined, actually died of it at, at the peak of COVID just because of that information. Wow. Because people were going and then they were consuming the thing directly. Yeah. yeah. And then they had some other effects and then they, they actually they passed that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's serious. Let's talk about Cranky Ankle Vaccine app. Yeah. What is it? How does it work? And why is it important for Ghanaians to have it or know, know about it? Right. So, uh, Cranky Uncle, and uh, I know a word like Cranky yeah. uh, is not uh, a Ghanaian uh, word, though. but we tried uh, to get a very good, uh, what do you call it, uh, word that could depict Cranky. Mm -hmm. you know, but uh, I'm sure as time goes on, we'll try to do that. But if you look at the app, we have two characters. So, actually, it is an app that um, uh, UNICEF. Uh, supported uh, countries to develop. And the idea was to see how we could um, have a sustainable way of dealing with uh, misinformation and disinformation that are related to vaccines okay. in general. So we developed the app and uh, we tried to also see how as Ghana we could also adapt it. So if you look at the characters that we have on the screen, you have uh, the nurse who looks yeah. like our nurse yeah. and then you also have uh, our uncle there where they can take. Yeah. Yes. So okay. this has actually been uh, deployed in Kenya, Tanzania, and then Rwanda, okay. and then including Ghana. So but every country adapted to the app. Exactly, yes. Okay. So you see that in terms of the dressing. Yeah. Yeah. So even when you download the game, before you go on, they'll ask you the country. Yeah. Okay. So you select the country, then it brings the, your country, uh, what do you call so it? So it's a game. Country. So it's a game. It's okay. interactive. And then uh, this game, Everything that is inside is evidence-based. So actually, research has entered into it. There's actually uh, one uh, professor, uh, John Cook, and then there's also another one, Dr. Uh, Angus. These are people who are well-versed when it comes to misinformation. They, they have developed a lot of uh, manuals to support, uh, to give guidance to countries in terms of misinformation and disinformation. And they realize that uh, having an interactive uh, platform by way of game will be very uh, good uh, so that at least as you play, you win some game to make it very interactive and then also competitive. Yeah, so that is what I crank here. So he has two characters, uh, one the nurse, and then you have one that is uh, Cranky Uncle. Now Cranky Uncle is perceived to be like uh, our everyday two known uncle yeah. who, uh, who feels that he knows all. He knows everything. Uh -huh, but one thing about this uh, Cranky Uncle is that he doesn't base most things on uh, facts, Fact, okay. but on experience and on what he hears and sees. Okay. And uh, the fact that he's also an uncle, he feels that over the years he has seen some things. So he uses those ones to kind of craft, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, misinformation, yeah. uh, with the idea of kind of uh, misleading people mm -hmm. uh, or maybe confusing people as far as uh, going for vaccines are concerned. Maybe. And we have our nurse who will always be giving us uh, the right information okay. uh, as far as what uh, the importance of vaccines are. Okay. Right. So, but Cranky Uncle plays a double role, okay. even though he's the one who misinforms. Like, actually, he's the one going to be teaching you the tricks that he uses. Ah, okay. You know? Okay. Yeah, so he gives you the trick. And then at the end of the day, he, when you win, then he becomes crankier. And then he also now, at the end of the day, congratulates you for being able to identify his trick. Ah, okay. Exactly. So he's aware of, he's aware of what he's doing. He's aware of what, what he's, he's doing. doing. So okay. he's now trying to teach us okay. what he's been doing. Okay. Like to that. And right. the whole idea, the last bit is that, um, you know how vaccines work? Like uh, normally you introduce some part more like an antigen, you introduce some part of the disease into you. Yeah, yeah. So that when it comes, it's fine. Your body sees that, oh, I know this, then yeah. you're able to do it. The same way this also does the game. Okay. So we introduce you to the tricks so that when you come across it, you, you will say, ah, oh, this is this the, before. I've seen this before. Okay. okay. You know, so that you're careful before maybe you do anything. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So this so is, this is on both iOS and, and yes, Android. Yes, that's right, and okay. Android, yes, okay. both uh, iOS and Android. Okay. And because we know that there are challenges to when it comes to uh, usage of um, smartphones and mm. the internet, mm. so it's also available on an IVR that uh, we do have. Uh, we have some platforms that we do have that you can go there. And the same interactive, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, process, okay. you have it also be informed about it. Okay. Yes. Okay. So those other platforms, you don't need data to do it? No, you don't, you don't need, need data. data. Okay. Yes, yes. All right. yeah.
it's, it's on a free this and so I just call the lines free. And then once you call the line, you ask you the questions, maybe to, uh, do you want to uh, go to Cranky Uncle? Mm -hmm. Then they say, and then that, uh, what do you call the kind of send you there, the algorithms will take you there. Okay. Uh -huh. Then there's a voice over that is there that will kind of uh, help you with the, with the interaction and then the responses you get them as well. Okay. Yeah. So if you look at this, uh, that's the nurse that is telling you that there are a lot of signs to show that vaccines are safe and it's a fact. Okay. And it's, yeah. So I you hear <laughs> him say that he doesn't care about facts? I'll show you the <laughs> different tricks I used to cast doubt on facts. On facts, right. So... So instead of as you learn, you end points and see me get crankier. Then. So like we're just saying that when you understand the tricks, you are mm -hmm. less likely to be fooled by some of this information that I... Let me just, all right. So let me also mention that we're also gathering some data like you, you mentioned, because I also want to understand how many people are coming on board yeah. in terms of the age groups, okay. where they are from and stuff, so that we can be able to do this. And so this is a research, some questions that are there. So okay. as they play, if you want to be part, you agree. If you don't, then you just disagree. So for the problem, you just disagree so that we can go on yeah. to this. And so these are the tricks. Okay. So there are about 10 of them. But there are five broad ones that normally the tricks are. But these are, we've broken down them, uh, broken them down into 10. So you have the, the first one that is the false course. Mm -hmm. And then you have conspiracy theories. I think that one will know more about yeah. it. And then you have uh, pick and choose. And the pick and choose, uh, this one is not uh, more like an attack, but more like cherry picking. Yeah. You know, sometimes how uh, media outlets, is not a print, mm -hmm. very catchy, you know, headline. Yeah, yeah. And then when you go into, inside yeah, to read the right. details, you realize there is something. Else. So yeah. that's just an example okay. of it. Then you have uh, natural is the best. Now, the natural is the best normally is from uh, stem cell. He says that natural is the best. So for instance, the herbs, mm -hmm. you know. And once it's a cranky ankle, he can he will tell you that, oh, for the past, they said, we have been using mm -hmm, herbs yeah, to this, yeah. so herbs is the best. It, yeah. Vaccine doesn't do anything. Then yeah. So he uses that one as one of the, the tricks. Now we'll look at the evil intent. Mm -hmm. So that is the misinformation, so for instance, and disinformation, sorry. Because you have some evil intent, then mm -hmm. you normally the personal stories, personal attack, mis uh, representation. Then you have the impossible expectation. Okay. Then you have the fake aspects. So the fake aspects here, um, you know, we have some people who know it all. Yeah, yeah. You know, somebody okay. he might be a very good politician, mm -hmm. but I'm sure if you have him on this your platform and then you ask the person that, what can you say about vaccines? Yeah, he'll tell you something. Yeah, you know, and sometimes the person might be telling you information convincingly, mm -hmm. but will be misinforming you. But it's just that uh, he has math. Yeah. So he's, he's, he's very eloquent, you know. So he's speaking the things, and then you are also thinking that oh, he's giving you the facts. Yeah. yeah. And then even sometimes uh, among the help, and I was happy that when I came, you asked whether, where I worked and, yeah. and whether I'm comfortable to handle mm -hmm. some things. Yeah. Because there are some spaces I can actually. Because mm -hmm. even if I'm able to see it, and then you, you push me to the wall, I might not. Yes. Yeah, and then because of maybe where I might be thinking, oh, let me just say it. Mm -hmm. you know, but at the end of the day, it might not be the right information that I'm giving you. So these are the, 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 the areas that Cranky Uncle will normally use. So you see that there are, some of them are locked. Yeah. Yeah, so as you play, then it opens up. It opens up for you to play the others. Okay. All right, so maybe for the sake of time, yeah. we'll just um, deal with this ones. But I'm sure once uh listeners also get yeah, to the and appreciate the rest of the the game that is right so here it's that the scientists use statistics to find out if one thing causes another yeah all right so i actually like this bit because this one is related seriously to the vaccines and its safety okay all right so our next is telling for example they run studies with large numbers of people to get reliable results so this is talking about Normally, how we come out with the fact that we're saying that this vaccine is actually safe. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it goes down to talk about the safety of it. 
But I realize it's a cranky ankle. It's telling that, but we cranky ankles don't need big what fancy studies. Fancy studies. They are just waiting to hear what people are saying. I took this, this one, and yeah. then they tell that it's. So all we need is a story. Mm -hmm. Is it suggesting bad things happening to someone after investing? Yeah. That's right. And then this is the false trick. The false uh, so That is the false cause trick. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. In other words, A happened before B. So A must have caused B. Yeah. So he now wants to do a quiz to see how you come in. So this one, this is an example. So you go to answer that. What does a cranky uncle say mm -hmm. when the sun rises after the cock crows? Say the, the cock must have caused the sun to rise. Mm. The cock has nothing to do with the sun rising. So definitely, he believes that something might have caused that. <laughs> okay. So the first one... So by analogy, that's By analogy, okay. exactly. You know. So you win some 20 points there. Then uh, the next comes, uh, just because two things happen close to each other doesn't mean one caused the other. So, so you're saying that cranky uncle doesn't believe in coincidence. Mm. Everything is linked. linked okay. mm -hmm. So if you get sick after a vaccine, I blame the vaccine. Okay. So see that we really had a lot of some of these things yes, during yes, the COVID-19 yes, yes, time. Yes, yes. Where people had, um, I'll give an example, like erectile dysfunction. Yeah. And they said it was a vaccine. Yeah. But you also believe, um, you know, like I mentioned, we are different people. Mm -hmm. uh, so... There were some who actually got that because if you're already a dull person mm -hmm. and then you take the person and then like you're weak, mm -hmm. for instance, you know it affects everything. Yeah. Even your blood flow with this. And so definitely blood pushing to uh, whatever it is for you to get up, it will not get up. Okay. Exactly. So we had people, but I think after a day they were fine. And back okay. then, yes. So these are some of the things that you, you see on crack. Yeah. Interesting. Yes. So this goes on and on and on. So it goes on and on and on. And then after that, you're done with the false uh, course. You then you go to the one. next one. Okay. And then okay. so you go it will teach you some of the tricks and all the stuff that are there. Okay. And you hope that by people playing this game, they'll get to disabuse their minds of all the That's right. misinformation, misinformation and all the myths yes. around, around yes. vaccines. Yes, yes. Okay. And uh, actually, this was... Um, uh, there has been a study that has been done after it was deployed okay. amongst um, about a thousand uh, participants, including Ghana. Okay. Ghana, about a thousand. Okay. And then after that, um, they did another, uh, what do you call it, a study again, realized that in terms of people's minds as to how they perceived vaccines to be had actually changed. Yeah. And it also even translated in the uptake of um, uh, the COVID-19 COVID okay. yeah, vaccines. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it actually works. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so there's works. some evidence that people exactly, yes. people are believing what Bel you're. Exactly. But has have we always been skeptical about vaccines, or is just a COVID nineteen vaccine? So the the thing is that uh, for introduction of every new vaccine, it comes with um, um, what they call it, so a little bit of skepticism. Okay. Even the childhood ones. Yeah. They tell you the history, and then one day I will uh, try to let the aspects in vaccination themselves, like the EPI program come okay. and then they'll give you a lot of history. There's a lot of pushback eh? exactly. when it was introduced. Exactly. Okay. So for every new thing, definitely there's always pushback. Uh, but it depends on like, how long it takes mm -hmm. before people you yeah. know, like, fall into... Uh, but you know, let's not forget that there are others too, no matter what, you do, they yeah. will never take. Yeah. Uh -huh. But majority normally will land within yeah. I mean, uh, the 98% that, okay. that we're talking about. Okay. So, that's, that's fine. So it's not only uh, what it covered, even the new ones, I mean, the ones that the children are taking also came with such. Yeah. Yes. For the sex killer disease. For the sex killer disease. Right, right. That's good. That's good. Anyway, mm -hmm. any final words to Ghanaians, what they have to do in this uh, surge of COVID-19 cases and, I mean, uptake of other vaccines? And other vaccines, yeah. yes, yes. So what I would say is that um, we should still kind of uh, take our protective measures seriously. Okay. So wash our hands with okay. soap and the running water. And then uh, we should still be wearing our nose masks because okay. it gives us a lot of protection, not only for COVID, but other Sometimes diseases. Sometimes it's just discomforting. You know. uh, yeah. 
But of late, of late, there's a lot of people who are wearing self who look at them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, you know. But you realize that before, I think uh, last month, mm. we had some funny weather. Yes, yes, that's true. Yeah, what I was, you know. Yeah. And then we are advised to kind of put on true, this. Yeah. True, so true. it really helps a lot. Uh, okay. Even though, like, uh, it's discomforting and stuff, mm -hmm. but you wear it, but if you just remove it, you breathe a little bit, then you put it there. Okay. And we're not saying that every, like, every time, every day you should be wearing. Yeah. Uh, but you actually gauge uh, where you are going. Yeah. You know, yeah, and because, because yes, place. because if you're not going to any place that you don't need to actually, but if it's a crowded place, yeah. you protect yourself and okay. also wash your hands after returning from such places also, and right. shaking hands for instance. Right. 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 And then also we should try and then go for the vaccines. Go for the vaccines. Right. And uh, most importantly, we should try to download Cranky yeah. Ankle Game. Okay. It's available on uh, iOS and then also Play Store. Okay. And then we should play and understand some of the tricks that people use in uh, kind of disinforming and misinforming us about uh, vaccines. Okay. And once we get educated, we can be able to hook on yeah. and ensure that we are also well protected and, and as well as our children. I agree. Yes. I agree. They say knowledge is power. So hopefully the more knowledge you get, the more armed you are to uh, support this attempt by others to misinform and disinform you. As far as your health is concerned, there's an uptick uh, or a surge in COVID-19 cases and the, the, the admonition is that go for vaccine if you have not. If you have already done that, you could still go for a booster jab to help you, to protect you. You can go back to wearing your nose marks. If you um, shake hands, you need to wash your hands. You need to practice social distancing if you can. And all of this is supposed to help you not just with COVID, but with other communicable diseases as well. This has been another edition of The Lowdown. Today, my guest has been Joel Abekulea from the Ghana Health Service. My name is Daniel Odo. Thanks to the entire production team. We're back another time with another edition. Until then, it's bye for now.